Hey folks, welcome to class. Today we're talking about writing uh, analytical essays. We're starting off a new unit of class and the, the first thing we really want to do as we start off is talk about where we're headed. So uh, ultimately this uh, unit is dealing with analytical writing and we will finish it up with um, an analytical essay. So like I said today, what we're gonna do is, is talk about um, where we're headed and uh, what is required for this analytical essay. And in the weeks that follow, we'll show you how to build these things. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you have here is the actual assignment for our uh, next major writing assignment. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, <clears throat> this is analytical writing. And what you will do here you will, you will write a four page essay where you identify and describe a unique and significant problem faced by new college students with the ultimate goal being to prove that the problem is worth addressing. <clears throat> so your main goal is to find a problem that new college students deal with, a problem that's important enough that, that you would argue at least somebody needs to do something about it. <clears throat> unimportant problems, uh, obviously they're unimportant. Um, problems like I don't like my classes or uh, uh, you know I don't like the cut of my teacher's jib or something like that. Those aren't really significant problems, right? You having a, a, a dislike of something is not really a, a, a real problem. <clears throat> we'll talk about what what constitutes a real problem in a moment. Um, but just keep that in mind. A, a problem is not the same thing as a hassle or a minor inconvenience or something that you don't like. A problem uh, prevents you from being successful in some sort of way. So keep that word in mind, problem. That's what we're trying to analyze is a problem, okay? Now, this problem should be entirely new one that students would not have had to face in high school or any other time, really. <clears throat> and in order to convince your reader that the problem you've su su yeah, selected is significant, you need to prove that the problem produces measurable negative effects. And that's a particularly important phrase that you will hear me talk about for the next several weeks. <clears throat> measurable negative effects. So, like I just said, a problem is only a, a real problem if it needs to be addressed. Um, if, it's, if it's a minor inconvenience, if it's something you don't, don't particularly enjoy, um, if there are no, nothing really, if there's nothing really measurable about uh, uh, why you dislike something or why something affects you negatively, then it, it's hard to say it's a real, it's a real problem. Uh, instead, <clears throat> what you need to do to be able to show that something is a real problem is show its, its negative effects. How does it legitimately hinder your day or um, uh, uh, take away someone's rights or um, make someone uh, uh, or ma make something that should be accessible inaccessible? <clears throat> Only by doing that, by showing measurable negative effects can you show that something is that that the problem that i'm asking you to to talk about is significant because after all a problem without measurable negative effects isn't really a problem right so by analyzing the negative effects this problem causes you'll show that the problem is significant and worth addressing <clears throat> and so we've got two really important concepts here in this introductory section. First of all, you're going to find a problem. You're not going to find an issue. You're not going to find an annoyance. You're not going to find something interesting. You're going to find a problem, something that new college students deal with that previously they didn't have to deal with. And it could be it could be a problem in your college and or it could be a problem just that any college student might have to face any given college student. But it does need to be a problem, not just something that uh, uh, 
that that is interesting or unique or different just because something's different doesn't make it a problem either only if it has measurable negative effects is it a real problem so that's the first term that we really want to keep in mind here is a problem you are going to be identifying and analyzing a problem and the second important term here are the measurable negative effects <clears throat> because what I've noticed in a lot of students a lot of classes that I've taught uh, particularly young students who have uh, 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 what what's, what's the way to say this maybe maybe a bit of privilege in their life sometimes to them what is a problem is not a real problem to other people right like <clears throat> having to cook for yourself uh, to some people is is a, a real big problem right while for others that's just like how you get along every day <clears throat> Now, in some cases, that can be a significant problem. If you can't cook well for yourself, let's say you're living on your own in college, you end up uh, uh, either making poor food choices or preparing your food, food, yeah, your food poorly, can't talk today, um, then you could end up getting sick, eating unhealthy, uh, gaining a lot of weight, uh, uh, and that can have, you know, physiological problems, right? So you can go into that and explain some real solid negative effects. But some students see inconvenience or difference as a negative effect, but that's not necessarily true. Tons of things can be different and not necessarily produce negative effects, right? People uh, of different religions have certain religious uh, clothing or whatever that they wear, right? <clears throat> turbans or uh, uh, hijabs or those kind of things doesn't seem to be any real problem in that it doesn't affect anybody's life negatively it doesn't uh, take away anyone's um, rights <clears throat> right so it's it's hard to argue that that kind of stuff is, is is a problem except under some very specific circumstances but some people see those kind of things and they argue well that's different than than what i'm familiar with that's a problem to me eh, you gotta that's a that's a pretty hard argument to make right rights are not resources you can't run out of them just because somebody else has rights doesn't mean that you lose yours right so giving these religious people the right to wear their religious clothing is is no different than you have in your own right to wear whatever religious or not religious clothing that you want to wear and so arguing that somehow other people <clears throat> wearing a different religious garb than what you might believe is a problem uh that's hard to show right you can use something uh, you can use a similar argument with say interracial marriage or um gay marriage or or, or those kind of things right so it's really hard to argue that something is a problem unless you can produce some measurable negative effects <clears throat> so that's really our second term that we uh want to 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 recognize and understand clearly <clears throat> before we move on so this assignment is an analytical essay you're going to find a problem that new students deal with in college that they didn't have to deal with in high school and before and you're going to analyze that problem which means you're going to break it down into its parts and look at them closely to determine uh, what measurable negative effects come from that problem and if you can show that there are some real negative effects that stem from a particular problem the the problem you're talking about then you're making an effective analysis you're showing to your reader hey this is a real problem now <clears throat> that's our goal notice something that i haven't said to do notice what is not being asked of you here nowhere are you asked to solve this problem in a lot of cases in the real world 
you may recognize that there's a problem and other people don't. And before you can start throwing out solutions, you have to prove that there's a problem first, right? Think about all the people out there who, <clears throat> uh, for some reason, don't believe in, in the efficacy of, of vaccinations. Or um, maybe, uh, uh, <clears throat> what's, another, what's another good example? Um, don't think that um, human activity is um, uh, drastically altering uh, the climate, even though all of our, li just, just literally all of our uh, scientific data <clears throat> shows us that it is. You can't start offering solutions to these problems for those people until you explain that there is a problem, right? For people who uh, believe that vaccinations are bad, you've got to explain uh, smallpox to them. And let me tell you, you go and you wiki smallpox and read on that for a little while. Um, or read some of the uh, uh, individual accounts from you know 150 years ago or so <clears throat> of people that had to had to to, to live with smallpox uh, such as they could. Um, you'd see that it's a, it was a very big problem, and the fact that we've essentially eradicated smallpox um, uh, changed human life on Earth. It really has, and <clears throat> so before you can even talk about the efficacy of vaccines, the person that you're talking to, your anti-vaxxer, has to recognize uh, that these vaccines can solve problems. You can't even get to the, well, let's build a vaccine. How do we build a vaccine? You can't even get to solving the problem until everybody's on the same page that there is a problem. So analysis, a lot of times, is the first step towards really making an argument, <clears throat> right? You have to understand that there is a problem or understand that something needs to change or understand your situation um, before you can offer a solution to improve it somehow. And that goes for anything you're doing. If you're going out and buying a car, you're going to analyze it in certain ways. You're going to compare its cost versus uh, the cost of other vehicles that can do similar things, right? So you're analyzing it based on cost. You're breaking uh, that issue down based on cost. What car should you buy uh, <clears throat> if you want to you know, look cool driving down the street? Well, you'll analyze uh, uh, various vehicles based on uh, uh, how you like their, their phys physical presentation. Or if you're a little more shallow, you'll, um, you'll analyze cars based on what other people say about them, how, how good they look, right? Well, I want people to like me in my cool car, so I'm gonna pick the, the one that everybody says is the coolest. And we all do that. But that's still analysis, right? So before you go and you solve that problem, the problem of I need a car <laughs> and I don't have one, we, we analyze that problem in a lot of different ways. Everything from uh, 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 its powertrain and its number of cylinders and, and how much torque it can put out, how much of a, 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 what's its carrying capacity, that kind of thing, if you're using it for work or, or that type of thing, how large is the bed, right? If we're talking about trucks and those kind of things uh, versus, you know, what does this exterior look like? Uh, does it look cool? What's it zero to 60? Can I, can I fast and furious this thing? Maybe some of the technologies inside are important. If you've got kids uh, or you just don't like dying, uh, uh, what are the safety features of this vehicle? Does it have one of those backup cameras and, and all those kind of things? So you see that every uh, type of, of, of issue that we address in the real world, um, if it's important enough uh, to, to affect our lives, is definitely worth analyzing. And when we analyze things, there are multiple ways to analyze things, right? Uh, we could analyze some of the, the short stories we've read as, as feminist literature, or we could uh, analyze some of them as um, examples of uh, early science fiction. 
and then compare those to, to compare those stories that we've read to other similar stories, either of science fiction or feminist literature or whatever. So the goal in this essay isn't to solve that problem. You're not going to offer a single solution to this problem. Instead, that's not your goal. Your goal is to explain to your reader and prove to your reader that whatever this problem is that new college students deal with, it is worth looking into and addressing. Solving that problem is a, is a whole different essay. That's an argumentative essay. And uh, in many cases, it requires solid amount of research too. And uh, we'll get to that for our for our last unit. So hold back on the uh, trying to solve that problem. So do not attempt to solve the problem you've identified. This essay is focused on analyzing the negative effects of a problem to show that that problem is significant enough to consider before starting college. In this essay, you simply want to explain that the problem exists and to identify the complex, meaningful, negative effects it produces. If it produces negative effects that are easy to solve, it's not a real big problem. But if it produces negative effects that, you know, are difficult to solve, perhaps because they're expensive or require um, a certain infrastructure or um, <clears throat> perfect timing, then yeah, absolutely, there's some negative effects there that aren't easy to solve. But remember, you're not making an argument for how to solve the problem. All you're doing is arguing that there is a problem and this is why, these are all the reasons why it's a problem. <clears throat> so let's talk about our audience. Remember, we always, whenever we write, whenever we make any sort of message, whether it's verbal or written, uh, whether it's a movie or a road sign, a speech or an essay, we always need to consider our rhetorical context, right? Now, obviously, the obvious rhetorical context is that you're writing this essay for an English professor uh, uh, who's amazing, but also um, you are writing under the conceit um, that I give you. And that conceit is, is shown right here. You should envision your audience for this particular essay assignment as a student who is currently a senior in high school and who plans to begin college in the following semester. So you're writing this to your uh, uh, underclassmen, right? They're just about to, to graduate high school. They think they, they got a pretty solid handle on how the world works or how college is going to work, but um, maybe they don't. And you can probably think right now of some ways that college was different than what you expected coming out of high school, right? Silly things, maybe like, does college have a yearbook? No, they don't. Do they have dances? No, they don't, right? <clears throat> but other things too, like, first of all, it's possible to fail your college classes. It's pretty difficult to fail high school classes nowadays. They kind of push you forward no matter what, right? Are there any negative effects that, that come from uh, uh, failing classes in college? Absolutely. <clears throat> or maybe, um, you know, in college or in high school, they feed you right in the cafeteria just about for free. It's pretty cheap, all things considered. Uh, but in college, they don't do that. Right. There's no there's no sort of uh, free or, 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 or inexpensive meals in college. In fact, it's kind of the exact opposite, isn't it? So good luck with that. Are there any problems there? Uh, expensive uh relatively unhealthy fast food being the only thing available on college campuses. Yeah, you could probably probably see some negative effects there too, right? <clears throat> so think about all the things that you didn't know were going to be part of the college experience that you found out is part of the college experience, right? Um, how many of those things required you to really uh, uh, revise your actions? take a look, make big changes um, uh, just to be able to go to college. Some of those things uh, are probably worth writing about.
<clears throat> so consider your audience here in this particular conceit that I'm giving you it's not just me that you're writing an essay for for a grade you're writing an essay to a colleague a younger student basically who's about to go to college and you're going to write about a particular problem uh, maybe one that you have some uh, uh, emotional connection with or, or a, a direct connection with. Maybe there, were, there was a problem that you had to deal with in college that you weren't quite ready for. And if you could only go back uh, and explain it to your past self, well, now you kind of can. So <clears throat> this student is unaware of many of the differences between high school and college. Um, so your essay is in some way written to prove to this student that the problem you're describing will affect him or her uh, seriously enough to think about ahead of time. And I bet you can immediately think of at least one or two topics that <clears throat> if some bright-eyed uh, high school student was going into college uh, you'd want to warn them about ahead of time, right? Even if it's just, just something like, hey, be careful, college is a lot more expensive than high school. In a lot of cases, it is. Um, in California, you get, it seems like you get those first two years of college free, but that is by and far not how college works in a lot of other places, right? In-state tuition can be thousands of dollars a semester. Out-of-state tuition can be tens of thousands of dollars. Can that cause a significant problem for students coming into to college? Absolutely, right? Especially if they don't have that money liquid, like up front, right then, right? Because then you have to try to get scholarships and those don't get handed out to everybody. So that's not something you can rely on. <clears throat> or you have to get loans and you pay those loans back with interest a lot sometimes, right? And so one of the first things you might consider talking about is simply the expenses of college and the negative effects that come from them. A lot of people have to choose between buying a school book or, <clears throat> I don't know, clothing or medication. And that's a real choice for some people. Uh, are there negative effects that come along with that? Absolutely. If you don't... Uh, uh, buy food, you, you kind of need to eat to live. So there are the negative effects that come along with that that you could describe. And obviously, if you need medication to be healthy and you, you can't buy it, you're going to, to suffer whatever it is that that medication is designed to, to, to help you overcome. So <clears throat> there are a lot of ways, uh, uh, facets through which you can analyze this particular topic. But your goal, uh, your ultimate goal, is to consider that audience. Consider that you're writing to someone who doesn't know necessarily that this problem exists. So you're going to have to describe it well enough, first of all, so that they understand what the difference is between high school and college in, this, in the way that you're uh, discussing. But secondly, you're going to have to, and this is going to be the bulk of your essay, uh, you're going to have to present evidence that shows that uh, this problem that you're talking about produces enough of a negative effect or multiple negative effects that can really uh, uh, affect their lives, um, either immediately or in the future or both. So. Your goal is to explain that this thing is a problem or this, this problem is significant and it's significant enough that student probably ought to give it some consideration before they even start college. Remember that you're writing an essay uh, here as well, not a letter. You're not writing to a, a friend of yours necessarily or anything like that. You're not writing an email. Um, you're writing an essay, a structured essay in the ways that we've talked about essays are structured with a body uh, <clears throat> or sorry, an, an introduction, a body with support information and a conclusion. So consider your reader as you do that and make sure that your tone is uh, appropriately formal. 
doesn't have to be overly formal, but uh, and that your language is clear, that you're using language that everybody has access to, right? You want to avoid slang and, and all of that other things, even though you're going to be talking about something that you are quite familiar with. And in fact, many times that's the exact time to avoid slang and, and, and cultural uh, language because you'll be talking to people who may not understand the problem fully. And if they have to fight through your language to understand uh, the problem through your language, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double problem, right? Not only do you have to convince them that the problem exists, but you have to do so using language that they don't have access to. So avoid that. Try to use uh, uh, le uh, formal language that uh, uh, <clears throat> is universally understood, right? Leave out the for sures and the on the dailies. <clears throat> anyway, I've already given you plenty of examples of uh, some significant problems that college students uh, can face when they when they go from high school to college. But I just wanted to give you a short a short list to start with. And some of these things are uh, most of these things are ones that my students have already written about. Um, some of them I'd never even thought about. And they uh, they wrote some pretty convincing essays about how these were uh, legitimate problems. So I thought I'd include them here. Um, some good examples include uh, living in dorms, right? A lot of you guys uh, uh, Many of you uh, still live close to, to campus, so close that, you, you know, maybe you can uh, still stay with family members and whatnot and not have to move out of the house or that kind of thing. But plenty of students don't have that opportunity, particularly ones that move out of state to go to a college that has a, a specific program that they're interested in. So living in dorms is a, is a, a can be a big problem some argue right and uh, mostly imagine sh thinking think about the dorms in, uh, as they operate right they're like big hotels except that instead of everybody having their own their own bathroom you have one bathroom per floor right a bunch of stalls a bunch of showers and imagine sharing those showers with with i don't know 30 40 other people on that floor right I hate to think about even sharing parking lots with you guys. You leave the carts everywhere, throw stuff on the ground like it's the 50s and it's Mad Men or something like that. Ugh. How do y'all litter so much? What's going on? Anyway, so there's no way I'm sharing a shower, right? Not without some, some sandals or flip-flops. That's the first thing they tell you in college when you're going into the dorms. Are oh, you going you gonna be living in the dorms? Girl, get some sandals. Don't go in those bathrooms when you bare feet. And yet some people do. And then mm, it's not good. I think that's how COVID started. Anyway, um, <clears throat> living in the dorms can be a problem, right? Living on your own for the first time can create uh, a, a number of significant negative effects that you might not be planning for. Dealing with college class scheduling. You can't accidentally not take enough credits in high school to pass, right? They tell you what classes you're going to take and you take them and then you're done. But in college, you can take whatever classes you want to as long as you've done the prerequisites, right? You could spend forever in college and have taken all the wrong classes if you ever want to graduate. So there's some potential problems there too, right? You have to build your own schedule. You have to think four years in advance. And who knows what kind of person you're going to be four years from now. You'll be different, uh, hopefully. And that's not a knock on who you are now. It's just saying that after four years, uh, anybody just about grows and changes in some significant way. So <clears throat> it's, hard to, it's hard to know where you're going to be four years from now. Hard to build those classes around who you think you might be or who you think you might want to be. Anyway, um, choosing the right classes to lead to your degree, uh, similar to dealing with college scheduling. Another element of college scheduling, now that I go back, um, you, you, go to, you go to college classes every other day, right? In some states, we, we have Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes, and then we have Tuesday, Thursday classes. 
But imagine how hard it is trying to get a job, for example, while you've got one of those crazy schedules. Well, on Monday and Tuesday, I can't work from 12 to 4, but on Wednesdays and, and Friday, or yeah, Wednesdays and Mondays and Wednesdays, whatever days I said, other days, I can't work from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock because I'm PM, because I'm taking a night class. Who wants to hire that guy? As opposed to, yeah, I got school, I got high school until 3 p.m., but after that I'm free. Okay, kid, you're hired. This this uh, uh, college kid is older, but man, I'm not, I can't work around that schedule. That could cause some problems too, right? So, dealing with college scheduling, choosing the right classes that lead to your degree, transportation to and from college. Uh, in high school, you had the school bus, right? required by law to stop pretty much right in front of your house and pick you up and take you to school. How do you get to college now? Assuming that we still uh, uh, meet face-to-face uh, -face in college, well, you have to find your own transportation or you have to make your own transportation or be your own transportation or buy your own transportation. And all of those things are problematic in their own ways, right? Not having access to a college school bus uh, actually makes it a lot more difficult for many people to get to college. What else? And staying motivated as a college student. A lot of times you don't see your professors as much. They may not seem like they care very much. Um, they're definitely not chasing after you to finish assignments, right? We're busy and you know we're not required by the state to chase after you. You're adults you came here with the uh, goal of getting an education, so that's on you. That's a real big change from high school. I think I skipped um, the various new fees associated with college, and that's obvious too, right? In high school, you didn't really pay for your books. You didn't pay tuition to go to high school. But now, if you want to get a level of education that, that um, helps you get a much better paying job, uh, because you're now you've become a skilled worker um, well you're gonna have to shell out some money right not just for the books but for the classes for that transportation as well even for parking passes in my college a parking pass was three hundred dollars a semester yeah again things are real good over here in California you you, you may complain your parents may complain about the taxes they pay but oh let me tell you, you guys get some services uh, comparatively. Yeah, and in, in North Carolina, we would pay $350 for the privilege of uh, trying to find a parking space. And there were half as many parking spaces as there are students that paid for them. And the, the, the school knows that. The whole idea is that you're not going to park on campus 24 hours a day. So, you know, they expect people to move around so they know, hey, look, we can sell about twice as many parking stickers uh, as there are spaces. Yeah, but what happens on day one or two when everybody's there or during exams? Oh, I guess just half those students get towed away. Is that a measurable negative effect? Yeah, I would say it is. <clears throat> so you can see that these are all very specific examples of problems that you face in college that you don't face in high school and you can see that there are some measurable negative effects either in time wasted or money spent or in health lost that show that these uh, that these problems are significant <clears throat> so keep that in mind um, it's not just, as you can see, it's not just, I don't like this thing that makes a problem significant. Nobody cares if you like something or not, no one. However, if you can show how this problem makes college less accessible for some people, if we're going to operate under the assumption that college should be available to everybody that can, you know, pass a college, you know, entrance exam, then it is a problem if some people can't afford college. It is a problem if some people can't make transportation to college. It is a problem if uh, 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 some people can't um, figure out how to build their schedules for college. Now, we're gonna move on to talk about some, some bad examples 
of these problems in a second. But I do want to point out a, 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 a make a little note here. In this assignment, uh, you really might want to incorporate some outside information to prove that there are negative effects that stem from the problem you're analyzing. For example, let's say you're talking about um, transportation to and from college being a, a, a problem. You might cite a bus schedule from your local town to show what time those buses run. And you know as well as I do, those buses don't necessarily travel at the exact same time uh, as your classes start and end, right? If you are forced to ride the bus to like the, 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 the city bus or whatever, the, lo uh, uh, the local bus transit system to get to and from college, you might have to take one so early that you're sitting around waiting for class for an hour or two. Or uh, particularly common, I've heard students mention, well, you know, the bus routes stop at 9 p.m every night, but my class gets out at 9.30 p.m., right? So if you're someone who needs to travel bus routes to get back home, uh, you either can't take those night classes, or if you take them, you're walking home in the dark. Uh, and that's, pro that's certainly not a very uh, safe prospect, right? You can definitely measure the negative effects of getting mugged, right? In the, the value of the phone that they took, and uh, in the hospital bills that you have to pay from uh, uh, the ass kicking you got or whatever. <clears throat> so it's actually very easy to incorporate some outside information like this, something very simple to show that, hey, uh, I'm not just uh, uh, coming up with, with examples. Here's a, a real world uh, uh, sample, here's some data Here's some evidence that I'm showing you that shows, you know, even taking the buses has its own problems. You can look online and find out, uh, find, uh, calculate how much money spend, people spend on gas uh, every year to travel, I don't know, 10 miles a day to and from a close campus. That adds up too, right? Hundreds, maybe close, close to a thousand or two. <clears throat> so, even that is uh, a potential problem. You didn't have to pay that in, in high school. A bus would come and pick you up for free. Now you've got to have that extra money when you didn't have to have it the semester before. So you can use things like bus schedules or um, brief uh, 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 mathematical uh, calculations of how much you'd have to spend or how much time it would take to do some sort of college activity that you wouldn't have had to do for high school and use that as evidence uh, for your claim. But if you do use outside information, make sure that you cite it both within the text, that's called a parenthetical citation, which means it's in parentheses, and on its own works cited page. Now we're not gonna go into, into citing sources too much just yet, that's for our, our final um, our final essay assignment, which is more of a, of a research project. Um, so we'll talk about the specifics of conducting research um, in essay three. But if you really want to do this, we've already been over MLA format to a degree. All you've got to do is go to the Purdue OWL or the MLA website, and um, it will give you the specifics on doing a proper internal citation and um, uh, work cited page. But when we get to uh, talking about essay three, we'll actually show you some techniques for leading into to, uh, to bringing in outside information, right? You don't just throw it onto a page uh, and, and expect the reader to understand what, why you're doing it. We'll, we'll talk about those techniques in specific on, on essay three. But um, if you do want to incorporate outside information in this assignment, you can, it's not required, but, but as you can see, it could definitely help you prove that a problem is significant. If you do though, if you do use that information, make sure you cite it, okay? <clears throat> now, let's talk about some bad choices for problems that students deal with. The first one is time management. Everybody loves to write about time management. And I don't know why, because time management is really stupid. 
And the reason it's stupid is because it's everywhere. We exist in like a four dimensional reality. And one of those dimensions is time. If you exist in time and space, you always manage time. Time management by itself is ridiculously vague, but on top of that, it's not something you only do in college. You manage your time in high school, you manage your time at church, you manage your time when you're cooking, you manage your time when you're sleeping, you always manage your time. There's nothing unique about time management. If you can think of something special about time management, like creating an effective schedule that allows you to go to work, take classes and sleep, that's a much better topic because there are some, some uh, negative effects of failing to do so well, right? But notice that, that I'm not talking about time management anymore. I'm talking about scheduling. And so when you use a, a, a vague term or a concept like time management, you're already way beyond the bounds of what this assignment is asking you for. You're talking about <clears throat> things that have uh, that are so far reaching that uh, uh, you can't argue for a specific problem, right? What's the problem with time management? In what scenario? In college. Okay, compared to what? Uh, high school. Okay, well, um, you have to manage your time in high school and college. The end, no essay. Oh, I need to be more specific. Yeah, you do. So things like time management uh, uh, avoid that like the plague. And I say this now and I guarantee you a third of you will still write time management. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. <clears throat> or you guys will write about getting into bad crowds or alcohol abuse. And, and those have some potential. Right. You're not around your family anymore. So so some kids uh, 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 end up abusing drugs or alcohol. And and that is potentially one argument to show that um, uh, uh, the social systems having to, to, to understand the new social element of college is a problem. Sure, but the problem is once a student typically starts talking about the problems with uh, falling into drinking and drugs, they stop talking about the essay I've told them to write and they end up writing four more pages about why alcohol abuse is bad or why drug abuse is bad. That's not the requirements of the assignment. I've asked you to talk about a specific difference between high school and college, something new that you have to deal with in college that you didn't have to deal with in high school and the measurable negative effects it creates. If you want to write about how it's difficult to find new friends in college because, you know, in high school, you've had these friends all your life. In college, some of these people are from, you know, other countries, may not even speak your languages uh, uh, and are people you've never met before. How do you have a social life? That's a legitimate problem. And one of the negative effects may be you end up, you know, meeting the wrong crowd and hanging out with the wrong people and doing some some uh, some things maybe you shouldn't do, whether it's crimes or drugs or something like that. But that's just one example. That's one paragraph in your body. A lot of students, though, the moment they get that, they run with it. And these are the other 50 reasons why alcohol abuse is bad. Yeah, I know alcohol abuse is bad. It's also not something limited to college. Right. Last time I checked, there are alcoholics who are not in college and are and are old and successful and, 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 and all, you know, that kind of thing. So they end up writing about something that, once again, is not uh, a, a unique college problem. So it's easy to fall into uh, uh, those issues. Um, and even now with what's going on, uh, some, some students will write about distance education, but that's something that we do whether you're in high school or college as well. Or, or being, a being in college as a parent. Yeah, but you can get pregnant anytime, right? 
<clears throat> before or after college. Um, or you can have a son or daughter or multiple kids, whether you're in college or not. So again, not a problem specific to college. And those are the big, the big uh, choices that I've seen most often that are bad examples, that are, that are not what you want to use for this essay. And you see the reason, either they're not specific to college or they're so vague that they don't relate closely enough to the assignment or they're an easy topic to go off on a tangent on and write a, a report about uh, a drug abuse instead of analyzing uh, a problem that students uh, run into in, uh, when they become college students. So avoid all of those types of topics. And to help you do that, I'm gonna give you assignments that some pre-writing assignments, some thinking assignments and, and whatnot, that'll help you uh, isolate some various problems that are um, specific to college and choose among them which one uh, you want to write about, hopefully one that's, that's interesting to you or that you have some authority on. You maybe directly understand it pretty well. So um, we're gonna give this a good amount of thought because the first part of this coming up with a problem really is uh, uh, one of the places, if not the place where most students that do screw up on this assignment screw up. Um, and you can, you can, we've been talking about this for 45 minutes now. I've, I've beaten this to death, I think. Um, if you've watched this entire uh, lecture so far, you know what I'm trying to, to, to get you to do and what I'm trying to, to get you to avoid. So uh, uh, keep in mind that the reason I'm, I'm spending so much time on this is that this is, it's because this uh, misunderstanding, this assignment is something that commonly happens. And the negative effects of this problem are that you get a bad grade even though you may write well. You end up writing about the wrong topic, you haven't done the assignment. So I want to make sure it's as clear as can be for everybody what this assignment is about, what is required of you, and uh, as, a, as an added uh, bonus, uh, what things you should avoid writing about if you want to put together an effective essay. So um, if you're confused about any of that stuff, try watching this part again. Uh, last. 20 minutes or so, and I, and I think it, it'll become more clear. As always, you can just contact me though, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to make it as clear as possible. A um, couple of reminders. Uh, this is a formal essay, <clears throat> so it must follow all MLA guidelines. You're gonna have your one inch margin. You're gonna have your News Times New Roman font and black ink and white paper, eight and a half by 11. Uh, you're double spacing all of your lines. You start uh, your essay with uh, your, your name, your professor's name, the class, and the date in British format, day, month, then year. You have your title, and then you have your text. If you cite sources, you put a short parenthetical citation along with each source, and you follow that up. You follow your essay up with a work cited page that gives the full length citation so that if others want to see where you got your information from, they can go back and find it as well. So all of that, you know the drill uh, uh, at this point. Uh, most of you guys have been putting together just about flawless MLA formatted uh, uh, text at this point already, so good job, most of you. Um, now, as uh, in our previous writing assignments, um, a preliminary draft or a rough draft of your essay will be due in a few weeks. In between now and then, we're going to talk in very, very great detail and in, in, in a number of specifics about how to build these types of essays, uh, how to build argumentative essays, or excuse me, analytical essays, um, and how to, uh, in general, and how to build this essay in specific. So uh, you'll be ready to put together this essay um, by the time it's due and as we go along, we'll go through step by step just like we did in the last uh, assignment. Anyway, when this essay is due on that day, 
<clears throat> uh, when the rough draft is due, I'll divide the class up or I'll have Canvas do it, split you guys up into groups and uh, we will conduct a peer review. A peer review, as you know, uh, is when we exchange our essays with other members of the class and uh, comment on them. We provide uh, edits and helpful feedback and suggestions in places where text might be confusing or off topic or grammatically incorrect. Um, <clears throat> and then you guys will uh, receive those annotated, those, uh, uh, those essays with notes on them that have been noted, annotated. Um, and you'll be able to look over the notes your peers have written and uh, <clears throat> maybe they found some places where uh, you need to fix your grammar or, or your spelling or something like that or your structure. And those are easy things to fix. Or maybe they've asked you some questions about, well, is this, is this your actual thesis? It doesn't seem like it's connected to what the assignment is asking us to do. And those are times when you really want to read your text critically again. You always want to read it critically, but, but in particular, uh, at that point, because you definitely want to have a, you'd rather have a peer reviewer see that problem than your uh, professor see that problem. Because by the time I'm looking at your essay, I'm evaluating its finished form. And so however I evaluate it, that's the grade you're going to get. You can't come to me later and say, well, what I meant was, well, if you meant it, then you should have written it in the first place and you had multiple opportunities to revise it, including a peer review. So use these peer reviews uh, uh, in the manner, um, or in the, the uh, can't think of the word, um, in, in, the, in the way that, that they've been given to you. Like I, they're, they're designed not as busy work, but to help you guys get objective views on your writing. And when you get those objective views back, <clears throat> you can see whether or not some of your text is, maybe it's a little difficult to understand understand, and you need to modify your language. Sometimes though, and, and to be honest, sometimes you'll get some uh, a, a weak peer review that doesn't tell you much. And that's just the nature of your peers, right? <clears throat> you don't have to listen to a peer review. You don't have to do everything that is told to you to do in a peer review. But the good thing about it is uh, <clears throat> you do get those outside opinions. You can't, you only have your own opinion to give. So seeing what other people have to say about your text can always shed some light on uh, whether or not you need to make any changes. So take those peer reviews with a grain of salt, figure out what change, changes you wanna make to your essay based on that, clean it up, and then it's ready to turn in. The final draft of that essay will be due usually on the, on the next class period after our peer review. I try to give peer reviews at the end of the week so you have over the weekend to uh, finish your essay, to revise it and, and clean it up and, and turn it in. Um, sometimes schedule doesn't, doesn't allow that, but I do, I do normally try to do that. So um, we'll, shoot for, we'll shoot for that goal uh, for this assignment as well. Um, so uh, we're done talking about this assignment today. Hopefully um, what I've explained has been, has been pretty clear. Uh, I, I, I usually get really good, really thoughtful essays uh, about this particular topic. You guys um, are first-hand experiencers of these problems, so um, you're, you're usually quite, um, quite good at, at explaining, explaining the problems and, and, and what makes them problems. Just remember, last, last, uh, last reminder, this essay is about finding a problem and explaining its measurable negative effects, a loss of time or a loss of money or um, <clears throat> a loss of health, right? That come along with it. And your goal isn't to try to solve this problem. Instead, your goal is to simply show to your reader 
who is a student who's in high school still and hasn't come to college may not know that this is a problem. Your goal is to show that reader that this problem that you've identified is significant. It will affect that student when he or she gets into college, most likely, and it is something uh, uh, that has enough of a negative effect that this reader really might want to consider what to do about it ahead of time. So if you can find a good problem like that, I've given you a few examples um, and uh, talk about it for four pages and you'd be surprised how many negative effects you can uh, explain about a, a, a particularly good topic, um, a particularly good problem. Um, then you'll have done what I asked. Um, the assignment in this case is just to analyze a problem, not to solve it. So um, it's going to do us some good to really brainstorm, to really uh, spend some time thinking about this problem. Our next few homework assignments uh, will be about that, uh, that exact sort of thing. So we're already going to get started. Anyway, um, that's all really I have to say about, about this assignment. It's going to take up the next few weeks. Of our of our class discussions, and we'll be we'll be working towards towards building this uh, this essay. Uh, we're done today, guys. I hope all of you guys are are being help uh, healthy and safe and everything. And uh, I'll see you guys again real soon. Take it easy.